For the last few years, hip-hop has been on an obvious decline. What was once a chart-topping genre has been failing to top the charts like it once did. Hip-hop at one point was considered to be the king of all genres for years, and now it finally appears that it might be being dethroned. It was years ago now that Nas started saying hip-hop was dead. Now, what he was saying sounds like reality for the genre. Many people in the culture have been saying that if something big doesn't happen in hip-hop soon, it might just be over for it. Luckily for hip-hop, that moment that they've desperately needed seems to have arrived with this Drake and Kendrick Lamar beef. This beef might just revive the interest needed to save the genre. The only problem with this situation is that it's obviously staged, and I'm going to tell you exactly why. Hey guys, I hope all is well. Welcome to The True Fizz, where I drop new videos every other day exposing the truth. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the truth about the Drake and Kendrick Lamar beef. Let's get right into it. For the last few years, hip-hop has been desperately waiting for a big moment like the one we're seeing right now. The Billboard charts made it obvious that hip-hop wasn't as popular as it once was, as an entire year had passed by without hip-hop having a number one on the charts once. A spot on the charts that hip-hop basically owned for years was now being taken by other genres. This alone spoke volumes of what was happening with hip-hop as it was clearly starting to appear like the genre had ran its course and was now on its way out. This is similar to what we saw with other genres like rock and roll that sort of lessened in popularity over the years. If you are wondering why hip-hop seems to be declining, it could be due to many reasons. Hip-hop artists have all become redundant, with new rappers being basically a watered-down version of past rappers before them. In a time where there's more rappers than ever before, for the most part, most rappers all talk about the same four things over and over again. Money, substances, women, and jewelry. With every song basically being the same as the other, it appears that the fans may be becoming tired of the same four basic concepts. This could have been one of the reasons that led fans to stop supporting the music like they once did. Many top rappers of today have been dropping music with sales at an all-time low. For example, NBA Youngboy, who's considered to be one of the top rappers in the industry, dropped his last project, Decided 2, which only went on to sell 37,000 copies first week. It's important to note that Youngboy is considered to be the top YouTube streaming artist out. If we compare Youngboy to past top hip-hop artists like 50 Cent, back in the 2000s, his debut album Get Rich or Die Trying sold over 800,000 albums first week. If you think comparing Youngboy to 50 Cent is unfair, we can take a look at Meek Mill's career, who sold 165,000 copies first week with his 2012 debut album Dreams and Nightmares. While it was a lot less than 50 Cent, it was still a lot more than Youngboy's drop in 2023. And Youngboy is considered to be one of the biggest artists out now. If we look at Little Baby, who was once looked at as the next Drake, his career appears to be dying out right in front of the world. Even Drake himself has been on an obvious decline, as if we look at his album sales over the years, we can see a sharp drop in sales happening as well. On Drake's views from back in 2016, he managed to sell over 1 million albums in the first week. Compare that to All My Dogs from 2023, and Drake only sold 400,000 copies. That's less than half the album sold. That's a problem, as Drake is the biggest in the genre, and seeing him lose half his sales while he's still the biggest tells us hip-hop is not selling like it used to. It's clear that something big had to be done in hip-hop to try to draw attention to it. A moment so big that would jumpstart the culture. But what could that be? What could make people interested in hip-hop once again? Well, what if the two biggest rappers in the industry got into a beef that involves all the biggest names in hip-hop? Now, when you look at that, that just so happens to be what's taking place right now. The one thing that could have saved the industry, Drake and Kendrick Lamar, are now in an intense beef out of nowhere, just in time to save the culture. The only thing is, I can smell this is fake beef from a mile away, just like my favorite cologne, which brings us to today's sponsor, Semperd. Since I was a child, I have always loved smelling good, and I can remember sneaking in my dad's room to use some of his cologne. My dad's favorite cologne was made by this company named Tumi. There was just something about the scent that stuck out to me so much. The first time my parents took me to the mall to get my very first bottle, my dad told me I could have whatever bottle I wanted, and I chose the same one he had at home, as I wanted to smell just like him. Now, years later, Semperd has unlocked a core memory from my past just by sending me a bottle of this amazing scent. For those who don't know Semperd from my previous videos, let me tell you about this wonderful company. Semperd is a fragrance monthly subscription service that provides you with access to a massive supply of fragrances. The way that Semperd works is that you pay a monthly subscription and you get to choose one fragrance a month from their huge inventory. The fragrance is then conveniently sent to your home and next month, 
you can choose a different option. Semper lets you choose a new fragrance to try every month for just $17 a month. Each fragrance comes with 30 days worth of the fragrance, so you can try it out before committing to a full-size bottle. The best part is, Semper always has plenty of high-end fragrances in stock that at the click of a button, you can get shipped to your front door. You can get the scent you want and save money while doing it. The wonderful people over at Semper actually send me four new scents. One Cool Customer by Grooming Lounge, Moss Plus by Commodity, and they also sent me Viva La Juicy by Juicy Couture, which is one of these favorite scents. Most importantly, they send me Awaken by Toomey so I can smell like my dad once again. If I had to pick a favorite, it has to be Awaken by Toomey, as it still smells just like I remember it. It's the perfect everyday scent, and it holds up great for special occasions as well. If you spray this on, trust me, people will be asking you what's that scent. As you can see, Semper sends you your fragrance in these awesome spray valves and they even send you a stylish case to carry it in. So if you want to smell like me and my dad, give Semper a try today. Use my link in the description with code TRUE55 or scan the code on the screen now to get 55% off your first month with Semper. That means you'll get your first month for a little over 7 bucks and you really can't beat that. I once again want to give a special thank you to Semper for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get back to the video. With low sales, ditty controversies, and nothing seeming to work in hip-hop, you can see why those in the industry are desperate for a moment. So desperate that they are willing to fabricate it themselves. This beef between Drake and Kendrick is 100% staged, a last-ditch desperate effort to save hip-hop before it's too late. Everything about this beef lets you know it's fake from beginning to end. Let me explain exactly what I mean by this. People are looking at this beef kicking off with Metro Boomin, Future, and Kendrick's song like that, where Future and Kendrick seem to take slight jabs at Drake. There's only two or three lines on a song from Kendrick that can actually be considered jabs at Drake. The most talked about line is when Kendrick says there's no big three in hip hop, it's only big him. This line is referring to the three biggest rappers in the industry, which people often say is Drake, Kendrick, and J. Cole. So essentially, Kendrick is saying that there aren't three top artists in hip hop, and he is the only one at the top. Now, while some may consider this a diss, it was very mild as far as hip hop disses go. Usually when rappers have a problem and are dissing each other, we see things get a lot more personal and much more disrespectful. For example, like we saw with Biggie and Tupac, where Tupac dropped Hit Him Up and famously starts the song by claiming he he slept with Biggie's wife. With that beef, there was a clear reason why Biggie and Tupac were beefing. Tupac believed Biggie and Diddy had set him up and tried to take him out in Quad Studios. Now when it comes to this Kendrick diss, not only isn't it personal, but it's very PG, almost like play fighting. Kendrick claiming he is number one isn't even that much of a diss because all rappers tend to say they're number one in almost every song. Drake's response was also very mild and again lacking the disrespect seen in real diss songs. Drake even ends the song by saying he's trying to keep it PG. They're only having a friendly battle. Now ask yourself, what's the purpose for Kendrick even dissing Drake now all of a sudden? The diss was completely out of nowhere with no real purpose behind it. It was just like it was when Kendrick dropped the control verse. Now the truth of the matter is, is that this diss song was all marketing for Metro Boomin's new project. With the song like that being marketed as a Drake diss, it peaked at number one on the charts, scoring a number one for hip hop and also helping the album sell better than normal for Metro. This diss song managed to put hip hop back in the conversation just like that. One thing that people should remember is that this isn't the first time hip hop has orchestrated beef for marketing purposes as we saw the same thing with 50 Cent and Kanye West back in the 2000s. Back in the 2000s, a beef between 50 Cent and Kanye West was promoted to do the same thing they're trying to do now, boost interest in sales for hip hop. 50 Cent was one of the biggest rappers at the time and Kanye West was the upcoming superstar who was taken over. The beef was supposed to result in 50 Cent quitting music if Kanye outsold him. Kanye ended up outselling 50, but 50 didn't stop making music. It was all just a marketing tactic to boost sales and sell records, which it worked perfectly, as they both sold outlandishly. Now, when 50 Cent was in real beef, people actually got hurt, and it wasn't only disses about who's the best rapper. Each record 50 Cent made at Ja Rule was full of disrespect, nothing like this Drake and Kendrick beef. Drake and Kendrick are keeping these disses PG in order to make sure things don't go too far, so they can eventually squash the beef when it's all said and done. Another thing that stuck out to me is the number of people involved in this beef. 
Right now, it's Drake vs. Kendrick, Metro Boomin, The Weeknd, Future, Rick Ross, and ASAP Rocky. Somehow, the entire music industry has gotten involved in this beef in some sort of Royal Rumble type match. It's obvious the industry wanted all hands on deck for this beef to make it as attention grabbing as possible. One thing that people are failing to realize is that all these artists involved in this beef are all friends. Drake has songs with Rick Ross. Drake also has songs with Metro Boomin. Drake also has songs with Kendrick Lamar. Drake also has songs with ASAP Rocky. They've all partied together, they're all a part of the same industry, and they all took the same oath. This lets you know this is all orchestrated by the labels and the artists, strategically created as the remedy to save hip-hop. What most people need to understand is that those in the music industry see the fans as sheep who are easy to manipulate. They know most people aren't going to look too deep into these things and are going to get excited off the thought alone of these two guys beefing, when in reality the record labels and artists see the masses as people they can easily manipulate and they do it often. The fans often miss what's real and what's marketing which allows them to get played. The music industry is creating artificial hype to draw in the audience. Now, this is the part of the video where we start getting real and point out the obvious fact in the room. All of these people involved in this beef are nothing more than Masonic puppets. Literally every single artist involved shows that they're Freemasons. Metro Boomin is seen as one of the main people behind the beef. Metro Boomin is a Masonic puppet and I have exposed him for it. Metro, like all the other Masons, could be seen throwing up the Masonic all-seeing eye hand gesture. He also called this label, Boominati, with the label's logo being the all-seeing eye, one of the main symbols in masonry. In this music video, he makes it clear he's a Masonic puppet, as he repeatedly throws up the Masonic all-seeing eye hand gesture. It's the same thing with Rick Ross, who has a song called Freemason. Also in this music video for the song Gigi Liberace, Rick Ross flashes Masonic symbols throughout the video. In one point of the video, he shows a Masonic Bible and a Masonic Pyramid, clearly indicating he is a Freemason. It's the same thing with The Weeknd, who in Little Uzi Vert's All My Friends music video could be seen throwing up the Masonic Square and Compass symbol. He also has a whole series of music videos where he shows himself metaphorically selling his soul for fame and riches. I have exposed The Weeknd extensively in the past, make sure you check out this video after this one. Future is another obvious Masonic puppet who, like all the rest, has shown his alliance time and time again. Aesop Rocky is another open occultist who actually shows himself selling his soul in his What's Up music video. Rocky has used plenty of Masonic imagery in the past showing his alliance. J. Cole is another Masonic puppet that I have exposed who has admitted to selling his soul and using Masonic imagery. Kendrick Lamar is another Masonic puppet who has shown his alliance time and time again. I have made many videos on Kendrick proving he took the same Masonic oath as all the rest of the rappers. He is one of the stars the Masons use to represent the Antichrist. As Kendrick has been presenting himself as his blasphemous Christ-like savior. In this song with Kendrick, J. Cole, and Young Jeezy called American Dream, Kendrick refers to himself as a traveling man. While that may not mean nothing to you, this is actually a code word used by Freemasons to identify each other. They call themselves traveling men. They actually identify each other by asking, are you a traveling man? This is exactly what Kendrick is referring to with these lyrics. Now if Drake is the most obvious, Drake calls himself the sixth god and uses the owl of Manivra as his record label logo, the same owl that the elite make a mock sacrifice to every year at the Bohemian Grove. He also called his record label OVO, which is suspiciously similar to OTO, which we all know is a Masonic organization that was once led by Aleister Crowley. With Drake, his Masonic alliance is extremely obvious. He was born into the industry. Not only was he a child actor, but his father was in the industry before him. Drake was born into the Masons, and even his stage name is Masonic, as Drake actually means Satan in Latin. If you look up the Latin translation for Drake, you will find that Drake means dragon or Satan. So Drake calls himself the Sixth God, uses Masonic symbolism, and his name literally translates to the dragon or Satan. Do you really think it's a coincidence that the biggest rapper in hip hop just so happens to be called Drake which means Satan and refers to himself as the Sixth God? You have to be blind to be missing the signs. Now the industry has created this battle between Drake, Satan, the Sixth God, and Kendrick Lamar, the Antichrist savior of the industry. This is all staged and obviously ceremonial. 
This is the reason that all the artists involved are Masonic puppets. This beef is all about stealing your attention and drawing you back to the industry that's crumbling. Hip hop wants to make sure they don't lose their influence over the fans. This entire beef is actually killing two birds with one stone, as while they use it to get eyes on hip hop, they are taking people's eyes off what's going on around the world. I know you all see the conflicts and drama rising everywhere around the world. Pay attention to what's going on, as they want you to pay attention to Drake and Kendrick instead. Two puppets on the strings of the elite who run this world. It's time we show the industry we're not their sheep to be guided to a burning end, and that they will no longer manipulate us with their marketing strategies. Our intelligence will be respected, and they are going to have to change hip-hop in order to save it, not deceive us to steal our attention. Don't fall for this orchestrated beef. Save your time and instead invest that time in learning about God. Remember, these demons are nothing but distractions. Well, that's it for this video, but before you guys go, I just wanted to once again give a special thank you to Semper for sponsoring this video. If you guys want to give Semper a try today, use my link in the description or scan the code on the screen now with code TRUE55 to get 55% off your first month at Semper. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.